Who here has heard of this book called The Four Hour Work Week? Who here thinks this sounds like a bunch of baloney? Maybe, maybe not. Well, the author of this book, his name is Tim Ferriss, he actually does do just that. He works a four hour work week. And this is a book I read. I recently went on the, a cruise to the Cayman Islands. And this is the only thing I did that was non vacation like as I read this book. I don't like to read books that often. And I'd like to share with you some of the things that I was able to take away from this book. Now, obviously, a four hour work week doesn't apply to all of us. We all can't work four hours. The author doesn't. But what we can learn from this book are some of the things he did to go from working 80 hours a week over here to four hours. Now, you may have a job where you have to be there. But you can learn some things to be more productive, more efficient in what you do. So the three things that I really took away from this book. The first one is combination. The second one is multitasking. And the third is the myth of the 9 to 5. Start with elimination. What does that mean, elimination? You eliminate things. What do we eliminate? Throughout our day, we have tasks we have to do. And we have things that come up that will steer us off our path. For example, you're working, you have a project, and you get an email from someone. Maybe it's a friend, and they say, hey, I just got some new pictures I put on Facebook. Check them out. <laughs> you have an option. You can look at those pictures, or you can say, nope, it's not time to do that. I'm going to continue working. Well, what I find myself guilty of doing a few times is I look at those pictures, and I see other pictures of other friends, and I look at those, then I'm looking somewhere else. Now I'm browsing the Internet, and I've wasted 45 minutes when I should be working. That's just one way that something can interfere with what I'm doing. There's other tasks that we have. We all know when we have a project we have to do, whether it's at work or at home. You don't want to do it, so phone rings, or you realize you're cleaning, you're doing other things. That's one of the things he talks about in this book is elimination. You'd be surprised how much more you can get done if you stay focused. And this is what he recommends in the book. If you're not sure if what you're doing is on path or not, Every 30 minutes to an hour, send a stopwatch to the walk. And ask yourself, is what I'm doing right now helping me to get done what I really need to get done? Or am I looking at pictures on the internet? And if you are looking at pictures on the internet, stop what you're doing and get back on track. Next, multitasking. Who here thinks multitasking is a great idea. For some things, it is a great idea. Doing laundry, it's a good idea to multitask. You put the clothes in the washer, you leave, you come back. Put them in the dryer, you leave, you come back. For cooking, it's a good idea. You put something, in my case, in the microwave, and you leave, you come back, and it's ready. So. As far as business goes, the author of this book and some other authors that I really like and think are very successful, they say multitasking in business can be a bad idea. <coughs> the reason for that, when you try to multitask in business, you're trying to focus your mind in so many different directions that you can never really focus in on just one, one thing that's really important. You may have a project or a task you're trying to get finished, and you may realize it takes you five minutes just to really get in focus and really get in the groove. And then all of a sudden, the phone rings, an email comes, another interruption comes, or you try to do something else at the same time. So what he recommends is to take one to two hour chunks of time, focused, uninterrupted time. And in those one to two hour chunks of time, you'd be surprised, you can get done a lot more than you could maybe in three to four, maybe even five hours doing other things, trying to multitask. I've found that true for myself. Now when I have a task I want to do for a client, I pick what I want to do, I'll set my time up for an hour, and I do that and just that. And that's helped me out immensely. And the last thing I really took away from this book <coughs> excuse me, was the, the myth of the nine to five. Everyone here thinks a full day's work. You come in at nine, 
three to five, or at least eight hours of work. That's a full day's work. So we judge the amounts of work we complete by the amount of time that we actually put in. Well, what this author recommends is to focus more on your productivity. What do you do in the time? Because I can tell you from reading this book, what he does in those four hours, most people don't even do in two weeks. He's got a lot of systems set up with multitasking, as far as having other people do things for him, and a lot of outsourcing. But as far as the myth of the nine to five, we all think you have to work that time. And it doesn't matter if you come in and you do just a little bit of work, but you're there for that time and that's all that matters. But what if you were there for just a little bit of time, but you did a lot of work? Because a lot of times the boss, they want to see you there in the morning and they want to see you leave. They want to make sure you're there. But think of this. What if there are two people working customer service? One person works eight hours, helps two people every hour. Sixteen people he helps throughout the day. Another person works for just two hours makes a training video and sends that out and helps 500 people learn something. Who is more productive? Well, the second person, only two hours. He helps so many more people. And that's focusing on being productive as opposed to just the time. And then you may say, Chris, I have to be at work from 9 to 5. If I leave early, I won't have a job. Well, you can focus on being productive and maybe you can get all of your work done in six hours. You can play on the internet for the last two hours if you want. Another task you have, though, you may learn how to be more productive. And focus on that. That's really what I, I took away from this book. Obviously, it's a big book. Thick, there's over 300 pages. There's a lot. There's a lot more concepts, and I can't possibly go over all of them in a five or seven minute speech. But those are just a few that I thought were really important that I took away. So you think those might help you, or you like them. There's a lot more here, so I recommend if you have the time and you want to see what else he has to say, how he actually does work a four-hour work week, because it explains it in here. And get the book. It's called The Four-Hour Work Week.